My name is Marie Elisabeth Müller. I am a professor of innovative content strategies at the Media University in Stuttgart, and I work at the Department of Media and Management, focusing on mobile uh, communication and uh, storytelling with immersive uh, technologies. Marie Elisabeth, innovative content strategy for whom? Who are your students? Yeah, that is a very interesting uh, question because uh, from my background and also from uh, from my perspective, I work with uh, journalistic uh, storytelling, with true stories, with verified uh, stories. And um, my students are not journalistic students. Most of them go into content marketing, go to agencies uh, later. They, they, there's a wide variety of uh, professions in the online media, in the digital media industry for them. And so uh, I um, work with them on a storytelling that is credible, that brings value to the user. And it's from the start, we look at the benefit uh, of the user and what is our relationship and what could be of value for both of us. What is, in your opinion, the most important message that your students get out of your lectures? Yeah, mobile is first uh, nothing else than our smartphones in our pockets, which uh, are a fully equipped uh, media house. It's a fully equipped publishing house. So that is the first thing you have to understand when it comes to mobile. The whole topic of mobile communication, what is really a paradigm shift uh, with respect to everything, workflow, distribution, revenue, um, payment models, the whole industry that is really upside down. And that is new. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's still, uh, we can see a reluctance within the industry. And the more you see it also at the universities. So that is uh, something uh, maybe most important just to raise uh, awareness and to teach the uh, applications of mobile communication, working with mobile devices, thinking mobile. Mobile is also about the mobile mindset, be open, explore. And uh, I think that is my, my message, um, open open up uh, for mobile because I believe we are already on the transit from mobile to wearables. So I think there is a high urgency to think about how mobile works, how does it really affect the industry, where are the pros, What can, where can we benefit, how can we manage to find a way to build up revenue by a mobile. It's a completely uh, diverse product line also. So all these things, it's very complex. It's a very challenging uh, world and, and innovation speed we live in. And that is where I want to take my students. What does it mean to produce content in a content overloaded society? Internet is online. Online is social media and social media is mobile. And with mobile, you reach out potentially to like 4 billion people and that is increasing. And uh, so it's a lot of noise. Social media and mobile live from credibility and um, from a um, credible person telling uh, content, be interactive. Uh, developing content maybe together interactively and in live formats with, uh, uh, with users. And so content becomes much more a story. You, somebody tells a story and uh, the person telling the story is um, a guide and uh, is not somebody who sells something or who wants to bring a message across and that's the end of it. You are not talking down to people. Content becomes an interactive story pattern. Even if you want just to really inform or um, bring across a product, you have to connect it with a story, how it is useful for people, for real life people. It's, uh, it's nothing uh, 
it, it has nothing to do with former ways of marketing. I think that changed a lot. And what kind of skills do you think your students are going to need the most? That is uh, also very interesting for me because the longer I work at the university and now it's uh, in my fourth year, uh, I understand that uh, journalistic skills are relevant for every storyteller today and everybody is a potential storyteller. So you need from the start to know how to verify content, photos, videos, interviews, how to verify your sources and the material, how to report, how to tell a story. It's very important to, to know how to do it. But then not to forget data. Today we start when you when you want to be successful with your stories out in in this noisy environment of four billion potential people, then uh, you have to analyze before you find the story and before you produce you the the story who is interested in that and uh, whom do you want to reach out to. And um, which platform um, demands which format, which tools are available. That in itself is innovative. And that is something that is also um, facing a lot of um, resistance and reluctance within the journalistic and also the marketing um, industry. Because I think in former times, uh, all the professional uh, profiles were clearly distinguished. But if we talk about mobile and content as stories, we talk about maybe one person who can do it all. Or a newsroom backing up with the data analytics and uh, also helping with the distribution. But uh, producing the story is up to one person with his, with his or her mobile. And uh, everything uh, develops so fast. And that is uh, why we have to be open and innovative on the fly. You are really passionate about mobile storytelling. And you have also a new website and you write articles on Medium. Where does this passion come from? I am so passionate about it, maybe because I, in my own professional biography and in my own life, I am a timeline of media evolution. My grandfather was a printer. My father was first printer uh, until uh, the Second World War. He learned how to print. And um, I worked uh, for 15 years for, for a German public broadcast station and for many other uh, media as well. Uh, and uh, my focus was in radio. So, um, you know, I learned it uh, not to say I, not to use the first person. I learned how to talk down on people and, and that's it. You, you tell a story and that's it, end of, end of the story. And um, in German, we have a saying like, um, it's verwendet. It went on air and uh, bye-bye. You never hear from it again. And, and um, readers and users, listeners who came back and wrote letters or so, they were ridiculed. Yeah? Nobody would take them seriously. So that changed dramatically. And that is why I'm so passionate about it, because that is a potential. But I see that it uh, breaks down walls. It gives... Un I'm very passionate about fairness, equality, also gender equality, giving underrepresented groups a voice or make them aware that they can become their own spokespersons today. Everybody has a mobile right now. So this um, potential to open the eyes and, and um, the minds for it, the, uh, yeah, that, that is uh, what I'm very passionate about. And um, Then also my experience, yeah, I, I've done a lot of workshops right now internationally in India, also in the US, then here in, in Germany, also in communities, not only at the university. 
And uh, the feedback uh, we receive and I receive is overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, when when I go there and and um, explore and and produce stories with mobile uh, with um, my workshop um, participants, it's most often the first time that they hear something positive about using social media for their stories for credible stories and i think that uh, made me also very passionate to give that to the people not to warn all the time when when other media were invented and introduced to the masses a lot of warnings came up it's so dangerous you will uh, become a stupid person basically but um it's important, I think, that we learn how to use them in our own ways and also about the negative side, but how can you pre prevent, how can you work with privacy settings and um, how can you um, figure out what is a verified a photo and what not and so on. So we have all these tools. And if you um, increase media literacy, even in the primary schools, I think we should go and, and not warn the kids about using uh, their smartphones, but train them to use them right. So they have this powerful means. And uh, then it would protect also our democratic societies. If you don't uh, learn how to work with uh, mobile and social media, they know it and they will, they will uh, manipulate uh, people a lot. So th there are plenty of reasons why I'm so passionate about it. And I think it's, it's very, very important for the future of our societies to learn uh, how mobile communication properly works. On your website, there is an amazing picture of you interviewed by a very young reporter. Could you tell me more about this? That was the most touching experience for me in, in, uh, in my experience with uh, mobile communication. In uh, last February, I went to India and then I spent one week in Kerala and I visited a primary school. Um, who uh, just that they produce without any funding coming in, with, without any extra funding, a news show with mobile only uh, on YouTube. And uh, it was very appreciated that I made the effort uh, from their uh, perspective to go there and to encourage the uh, children and to tell them how relevant that is. And I'm convinced, I believe that uh, these children are the youngest mobile reporters you will find on the world. And it's their own initiative. The teachers are great. The children are great. So they build up this newsroom. And um, I, I think that is what, what I love to support. What is the most important lesson that you have learned from this experience? Maybe it's visible in, in this experience uh, that is typical for my experience as well in the digital space that it's a very wrong approach if you think uh, you are isolated with your smartphone and then you chat to strangers and, and foreigners and you but you never really live uh, this, this prejudice. No, I am a model to show you, you can get in touch through a smartphone, through social media, and then you will also meet. And even if it's uh, 7,000 kilometers away or 4,000 kilometers away, you will meet. And I see it in my young students also here at the German uh, Media University that they don't see the opportunity to just chat or to just do an interview by using Twitter. And so we started this and uh, it's, it's, it's really um, makes them very excited about, they, they think they can really make a difference. That is what they feel uh, in second one, that they can reach out and then even famous influencers 
or journalists come back. They, they do a quick Twitter interview in 15 minutes. They take the time and then they are connected and, and uh, knowledge has been shared and uh, is published. And so th th that is a very exciting experience. And you could never reach out and make this experience and form groups and also powerful movements if uh, not for uh, using a mobile. That is mobile communication. You can reach out to uh, to everybody, literally, and that uh, I think that is a very powerful message. Why did you become a journalist? I personally want to make a difference. I always wanted to work with people. I had the opportunity to stay at university, for example, but I want to wanted to go out and talk to the people, and that's also what you could see with this radio. And now with mobile, it's a very oral, it's a very um, intimate approach, so to speak. When I say from, from a spatial perspective, you don't talk down to people and now all the users are brought into the story, immersed into the story. Journalism is much more becoming a service. Content marketing is also a service. You don't want to talk people into buying something that they don't need. That's old. That It's old-fashioned. It's over. People are much more aware now what is happening, and they want to be taken seriously. And um, and that was always so. That was always already when I was a little child. I like to talk to people, go out, find out more about them, and so maybe I'm not used to talk a lot about myself. It's not so much about myself. It's more like about connecting and talking to other people. That's that's really relevant to me. Is there somebody who inspired you? I think the story of my grandfather, whom I never met, he died before I uh, came into life. So my, my grandfather came from uh, Poland, from Poznan, and he uh, literally walked to Hamburg and then went on to Duisburg and opened a uh, Enterprise, a print uh, enterprise. And uh, I'm very proud of him and this uh, family history because I think it's both. It's a media media uh, enterprise and also it was very innovative at this time. And um, print uh, means a lot to me. Everything started with print in the media industry. So I value that. But I also think that it's time to go ahead and embrace uh, mobile and uh, wearables and immersive uh, technologies now. Are we going to read paper books in the future? I think we will always read and we will always listen to podcasts, for example. So uh, a lot of words. So we, we have uh, words are relevant, not only visuals. But um, books, maybe it's um, it's something becoming exclusive. It's uh, it, it, I don't think they will completely die out, but I think uh, just for practical habits, yeah. I I also I use now to read on my mobile, and uh, yeah, books books will be a exclusive uh, product in future. Do you have a favorite book? If I would uh, mention a favorite book, I would mention two, because I don't want to mention only men. I make it also uh, one of my um, goals is to always uh, create equality in perspective. So I, I really love um, Julian Barnes. And uh, his book, uh, The World uh, in Ten and a Half Chapters, also the, the history of the world in ten and a half chapters. I love this book uh, very much. And I'm also very fond about the literary reports of Hanna Krall, the Polish, uh, the Polish writer and journalist. Yeah, she, she is both. And she's a great model for me. Why is she a role model for you? Um, because she she is a woman and and she fought her political fights and um, she she also managed to uh, write about uh, very painful historical periods and and persons 
uh, she created this culture to picture lives of victims uh, of the native time um, where the natives managed to to destroy all the documents. So that is, uh, I think, uh, really a, a role model that she managed to uh, create a credible storytelling about lives uh, which are not documented, which is very difficult to write about it and not to write like in a fictional way, but uh, to make it very uh, distinctively clear this part is something we don't know, but it could have happened like that. It's very realistic. And this is what we know. And then to merge that to a very um, igniting story, that is very, very important. And these skills are relevant today for social media as well. When content is stories, stories have to be short and igniting. And we always have both sides, something we add in a, in a way that, that is fictional or poetic or we, we create. And the other things are the facts and, and uh, really the, the reporting side of things. And if both come together in a story, I, I think that is um, breathtaking. What is the future of stories? What do you think that innovative communication will look like in 10 years? I do hope it will be affordable. Yeah? The access, if you talk about equality, it has always to do with access. And access to these stories, access to the technology that enables these stories, that is most important. And I fear that it might be very Uh, expensive for a big part of the population uh, on earth uh, to afford that. But I would like to make a difference and show with my mobile passion how to work with low-key technology and affordable technology for everybody with these stories. And I see the future when I look at it in, in my um, optimistic perspective I see it, uh, uh, it's a crazy future, you know, we don't need any devices in our hands. Everything will be screened and we can uh, project uh, 3D and artificial intelligent objects and data visualizations and everything uh, on the fly everywhere. And it's very personalized. I, I look very much forward to this personalized, content and knowledge we can we can activate everywhere where we go and walk and uh, communicate about it and that that is very exciting don't you think that perhaps we will keep even more storytelling sharing and listening all in our group do you think that we are going to be able to communicate outside Our bubble. Yeah, no, I'm optimistic that we can do it. It, it uh, comes down to media literacy. If we know how to share and to create and to reach out to communities who want to connect with us, then uh, everything is possible. No, I'm not pessimistic about it because it, uh, history tells us uh, the filter bubble start, uh, starts not with, with social media or mobile. It was there always and it was much worse in, in the past. People would only uh, vote for the same party for their whole life. They read one newspaper for their whole life. And so is that not a filter bubble? An extraordinary filter bubble we are coming from. So the opportunity to reach out to a diversified uh, audience and to make use of our power in our pocket, that's here. But we have to teach and to learn how. You said that you would like to make a difference. What is the most important difference that you would like to make? From today, I would say I would like to make a difference really for underrepresented groups and also for equality, for gender equality. I am tired. I'm so tired to hear all these excuses why there are only... Um, one or two women on a podium and six or seven men. 
And to always see this inequality in representation of women and men in the media, for example, I'm so tired and it all boils down to human rights for me and to interest that, that is uh, interest against uh, women's rights. And uh, I would like to make a difference here. What do you like doing when you are not working and dreaming about mobile storytelling? Writing. <laughs> I'm writing when, when, whenever I have time and that, that gives me a complete peace and peace at mind and I can forget everything if, I, if I'm able to write. What do you write? I write uh, true stories. A little bit more. I'm curious. Um, I, I write uh, I write novels. I haven't published a novel yet, but uh, I'm writing uh, on a very personal uh, story about my family, and I'm writing about um, a very sweet girl in in Berlin. That is more an uh, entertaining uh, novel. So I, I have several projects. And uh, yeah, I, I wrote, I'm a writer since, since I can sing, since I was a girl. I really look forward to reading your novels in a real book. Thank you so much for this conversation, Elizabeth. Thank you, Nirina. It was a great pleasure. And thank you for watching. See you next time again. Bye. Ciao.